How's it going everyone? They call me the toaster and I want to show you this really big iron farm that I made. It can hold up to 120 villagers filled with 120 beds, 120 job blocks and a spawning platform for up to 10 iron golems to spawn at one time. I just finished building this and I have to say it sucks. This causes so much lag that I actually get better spawn rates when I only put 60 villagers in here. So I built a much better 60 villager farm. Check this out. And look at that. Doesn't that look so much better? This thing gets you about 500 iron per hour. It's absolutely a monster. So let me show you some of the awesome features about this build. So let's start with the heart of the village farm, the beds. The beds determine where the village center will be and that determines where the iron golems are going to spawn. So if you see here, the village center is the pillow of the bed. It could be any one of these beds and that doesn't matter because it's going to change over time and this farm can accommodate any pillow being the village center. So I've marked the pillow blocks up here above and from the pillow blocks an iron golem can spawn eight blocks in any direction. This platform is eight blocks going out in each direction. And they get funneled into the killing chamber here where the lava will deal fire damage and the magma blocks below will also cause damage so it kills them really quickly the iron is collected into these hoppers and goes into this chest right over here i also left this gap open because there are going to be five cats that are going to spawn and it's important to keep them alive because the village will try to spawn either an iron golem or a cat but the maximum amount of cats is five. So if you collect all the five cats in here, then the village will only be able to spawn iron golems and that's gonna increase your rate. I wanted to show you something about the cat room. You see how these cats hang out right by the door? If this door was on the same level as them, as soon as I open this door, they would run out. So you see now I could open it up and I can get in without them worrying about them getting out. And it's also important that when they fall into this chamber, they don't go back into the water stream to push the iron golems and just cause a mess. So if you see here, no matter where they land in here, they can't ja jump back up into this area. So this is their safe space. I also put a bit of water here in case they're on fire and they need to put themselves out. And that's it for the cat room. Let's check out the villager spot. So the villagers are inside of these doors here. Every time you see a green emerald block, that means that a villager should be there. So in there, we have two composters because we're going to have two farmers in there. What you're going to do is load up this dispenser with bread. And when you flick the lever, you see how it dispenses all the bread. That's going to make the two villagers enter love mode and they're going to make children. The children are eventually going to make their way outside because you see this is a one and a half block gap. I put this wooden slab so that it's more apparent but only the children can fit through here. And once they fall, they're gonna trigger this string activator trap, which activates this dispenser, and it's gonna put a minecart here and send them on their way. Just to show you an example, so when the kids come out and touch the string, it dispenses a minecart. They're gonna be caught in the minecart, and then they're gonna get pushed into their chambers. Once they're in the chambers, you're gonna wait for them to grow up. I have a whole minecart system that allows you to push the carts into different chambers and I even have a second floor to be able to bring them up here. You're going to need 10 villagers to get the iron golems to spawn so let me show you how you start this up. Best way to fill this up with villagers is to use zombie villagers. So I added these two levers up here to keep the doors open and what we're going to do is we're going to break this temporarily and then we're going to break this on the way out and what happens is we're going to lure a zombie villager into here. He's going to come in here and then we're going to trap them in here and come over here and close them off. So actually we should break all these top blocks too. So let's say you find a zombie villager. Have him chase you. Lead him right into this trap over here. You're going to close this one here and close that one. So now he's stuck in there. You're going to hit him with a splash potion of weakness and a golden apple. And let's wait for him to become cured. It should only take about two minutes. After he cures, he's going to hook up with one of the composters there. You saw the green particles. Now he's going to become a farmer. So let's trap him in this corner. Because we're going to need a second zombie villager. So this time, we're going to break this block here. 
And we're going to break this block here to reset the trap. Let's find another zombie villager and lure him back into this trap. We're going to leave him into here. Come on. Perfect. And when he gets close, trap him inside of there. Perfect. Hit him with a splash post and a weakness. And give him a golden apple. And wait for him to become cured. Once he's cured, he's going to hook up to that composter over there. Because you can see the green particles. Now that they're both hooked up to those composters, we can put back this glass. And break the barrier in between them. And be sure to cover up completely. So, let's flick this lever to get some bread in there. They're going to start giving each other bread. And you see, now they're going to... There we go. And then eventually the kid is going to make his way out here. And watch him fall into the trap. Watch him come out. He gets picked up right into the cart. And you can go and push him into there. And flick the lever to get the next one. So this is good. These other two kids fell out. And you see that the minecart trap instantly picks them up. Watch the kid come out. It's actually so satisfying. So you need 10 adult villagers. Because 75% of them have to have worked in the last day. And all of them need a bed. That's the requirements for a golem to spawn. So in terms of length, it is actually 26 blocks long. You can see I marked them out. 1, 10, 20, 26. This is the height. So from the ground level, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, it's only 9 blocks tall. But there are certain parts that go 2 blocks underground. So I also wanted to include that as well. Let me show you what I'm talking about. You see this goes one block down. Also the beds, they also go one block below. Then under the dispenser, we have a simple observer clock. And of course also where the cats are, it goes down by one and a half block. Because actually these are all slabs. Because I don't want anything else to be spawning in here. But other than that, everything is on the same floor level. So technically it is 11 blocks tall. But if you're okay with just building nine above ground... And just those three areas where we have to go two blocks below, then that's okay. It's also 20 blocks wide. So you see 1, 10, 20. And where the iron golems spawn, they actually need four spaces. So make sure that these four spaces above the platform are liberated. So now that they're fully grown up, let's give them job blocks. Let's place down one job block and see who it gets assigned to. Look, this one here became the Fletcher. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to break this block, and I'm going to put it right here instead. Let's put down the next one. Let's see who it linked up to. It linked up to this one here. So we're going to break this block, and we are going to put it right here. If you can't put it down, it's because you have to push them in a little bit more. Let's see who became the Fletcher. Now let's say you want some librarians to trade with the villagers. So let's put down a lectern. And let's see who it becomes assigned to. If you see a green one that's dressed in green like this, just kill him. It, he's going to cause you too many problems down the road. So let's find out who became the librarian. Okay, perfect. This one right here. Actually, he has a fortune one book, which is kind of unfortunate because I have to break this block. So I have to put it here. So if you want to reset his trade, what you do is you break the block next to it. Put a sticky piston here and break this block and put a button up here. So now you see... He's going to reset the trade. And fire protection 4. That one is pretty good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to break this sticky piston. And I'm going to put back these blocks here and remove this button. You have to lock it in. Just to be sure that he doesn't change the trade. So you have to give him 24 paper. So it's important to note that before you start trading with the villagers. That you have paper ready so that you can lock in the trade. Now that you traded with him even one time for one emerald, he will never change this trade. And do this for all the villagers that you have. So now we have 10 villagers. And we have to wait for them to work. And then an iron golem should start spawning. And there he is. He spawned not even 30 seconds after giving them all their job blocks. So watch as he falls into here. The lava is going to be killing him as well as damage from the magma block. And the iron is going to float down into the hopper. And get collected into the chest right here. And look another one spawned right away. So now we just need to repeat this process. And fill in every single one of these cubicles. So it's very easy to fill up the first floor. You just need to point the rails into everywhere. But I want to show you how you can get them up to the second floor. So let's say we wanted to put one right up here. You're going to put a redstone block down like this. You're going to break this block. And then you're going to put a rail... Just like that. You have to play around with the rails. So to push them up, 
you just need to do it like that. Once you have one up there, you could put the job block in front of them like this. And then you can break the minecart and then break the rail, of course, here. So then now you could just reach them from below. No need to go up to the second floor. Once you have the village farm completely filled in, it should look exactly like this. A villager in every nook. This will put exactly 60 villagers inside the farm, which means that the village will try to spawn up to six iron golems. If you find that 60 villagers is causing your world to lag a bit, you can dial it back to either 50, 40, or 30 villagers. And this design is 500 iron per hour. So let's get right into the build. Here's the full materials list. You're going to need about two stacks of torches to light up the place properly. Two buckets of water to make an infinite water source, because we're going to need a little bit of water for this project. A lava bucket. Two and a half stacks of leaves. The leaves are used around the water platforms to make sure that nothing else spawns up there. 14 buttons. This is mostly to hold the lava in place but you only need three to start with just one lava bucket. Six oak buttons. This is used for the doors to get in and out of the villager chamber, so they're useful for the iron doors to get in and out of the building. Next, you're going to need two wooden doors. You don't need to use the acacia door. It could be any wooden door. You're going to need about 20 levers. This is for rerouting the villagers with the minecarts. Next, you're going to need two dispensers. One of them is going to be for the minecarts, and the other one's going to be for the bread. Then I recommend 8 minecarts because you need 10 villagers in there to get the iron to start spawning. You already have 2 farmer villagers so you only need 8 minecarts to get the iron to start spawning and then you could use that iron to make more minecarts if you need. Next you're going to need 2 chests. This is to capture the iron at the front of the building. You're going to need about 3 stacks of glass. Next you're going to need 59 trap doors. You have 58 villagers that you can trade with and then you need 1 trap door because of the tripwire setup, then we need the tripwire hook with the string. This is for the baby villagers when they come out. That's how they trigger the minecart system. We're going to need a redstone torch. This has a secret use that I'm going to explain later in the video. You're going to need a block of redstone because you're going to have a powered rail. And then you'll have another powered rail to get them up onto the second story. But that won't happen for a while, so you don't need the second block of redstone right now. You'll need about 32 rails to start. When you make them, you make 16. So just make two packs. And I think that should be enough to get you all of the villagers if you're breaking and reclaiming the rails. Next, you're going to need two hoppers. This is used to put the iron into the chest actually at the front of the building. Then you're going to need eight spruce trap doors. It can get a little bit tight in there. So if you notice, I use trap doors to box in the villagers and clear up some space. They could be any wooden trap doors. You're also going to need 26 slabs. They don't have to be wood. They can be made out of stone. But the reason why I'm using wood is because it's easier to see in the video where the slabs go. They go at the bottom where the cats are. And then there's also three of them where the farmers are. Lastly, you're going to need the two composters. Absolutely to make the farmer villagers. But then the other 58, they could be whatever job blocks you want. So if you like having Fletchers to trade sticks with them for emeralds then get some fletching tables in there. If you like trading for enchants, get some lecterns in there. And you could also trade with paper here. And then if you like getting the diamond armor and diamond tools, get the blast furnace. You only need three bread to make one kid. So if you're making about 60 of them, you're going to need 180 bread. All right, and that's it for the main chest. Now here in this chest, we have the optional materials. So a hopper and a chest. You, this is for the dispenser with the minecarts. You can put it directly in the dispenser and it holds nine minecarts, so that's pretty good. But if you want to fully load this thing with minecarts, then you could add this system to that dispenser so that it automatically feeds them. Sticky piston is not necessary. That's for breaking and placing lecterns really quickly. You could just break them with an axe too, so if you don't have a sticky piston, that's okay. Next is two observers. Under the dispenser that shoots out the bread, there's an observer clock, which is two observers pointing into each other which triggers the system to spit out the bread. But you don't need that, absolutely. If you want, you could just flick the lever up and down, and that was going to dispense the bread for them too. Next is three more buckets of lava. So in the build, I do have more lava, but you only need one to kill them. So you don't need these other three to get started on the build. And lastly, the magma blocks. Although it also does damage to them, it's not necessarily required for the build because with just one blade of lava, it's going to kill them. It'll just take a little bit longer. Then for the blocks, you're going to need about 19 stacks of your block of choice. And that's just to build the structure. 
If you also want the floor to be made out of stone bricks, then you would add this many. And finally, we need 60 beds. We're going to have 60 villagers. Each villager needs a bed. We need 60 beds, so it's one full double chest and six more. That makes 60 beds. All right, now that we're done with that, let's get started with the build. Let's start this build right at the front in the middle where the chest is that collects the iron. Place a double chest in the ground and place two hoppers pointing into it. Next, we're going to place the glass. We're going to place one block next to the hoppers and there needs to be eight total. So two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now we're going to cover the chest and the two spots next to it. So we're going to place four pieces of glass like this. Now skipping this block, you're just going to place your glass in the same length as the other one. Now build this L piece up by one. Next, you're going to place one glass here so that you have a one block hole and you're going to cover this with your stone bricks. So you're going to continue this on the other side, but just be sure that there is this one block gap here. This is for the cats. So let's finish up the iron chamber. You're going to need one lava blade right here. And now you're going to close this area off and put down two water buckets like that. This is optional, but if you want to make this floor out of magma blocks, you can. The farm works without it. It's just that this will deal damage to the iron golems, so they'll die quicker in this chamber, and it doesn't damage the items. Also optionally, you can add more blades of lava. You just need to place alternating buttons like this. And then across from the blank space, you're just going to place a button and skip one and place them alternatively like that. Now you could add more lava in. Next, we're going to build a cat chamber. So what you're going to do is place down four glass like this in a two by two. Now face the opposite way and place down a door on this block and step forward and place down a door on this block. This will create an airlock. Now you're going to place down two glass like this. And we're going to build this the length of the rest of this. Also place down two buttons here so that the water isn't going over the hoppers. This is useful because some cats are going to get pushed all the way to the end over here. And then if they're not floating on these hoppers, then they're just going to run through and go into the cat trap. So now we just have to dig this out a bit. You're going to break the first block under the door. Then this one you're going to break down by two. This one you're going to break down by two so that when the cats come through this hole, they can't jump back up. We're going to do the same thing for the next row here. And the rest of these we can just break by one. Place slabs down, except on that block so that nothing will spawn. Actually, to make this a bit nicer, you could place slabs on top of that and kind of make a little staircase. Next, let's close up the back and even the back of this chamber right here. All right, now it should look something like that. Now we're going to start building the spawning platforms. We'll need to build this out by seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And do this for the whole length. And fill this in completely. So you should have a pretty big square. And we'll do the same thing on the other side. So above the glass, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And just fill this in completely. And once that's all filled in, it should look like this. So now we're going to build the perimeter. So in the front, you're going to build it up by one. And then over the edge, you need to come out by one and build these above here. Not two, just one. And you're going to do the same thing on the other side. You'll need to come out by one and then you'll need to build it out. The reason for that is that water travels for eight blocks. So when I place one in the corner right there, you see it pushes right into the lava and it doesn't cover it. So you see, and the water doesn't come off on this edge either. So we're going to build a perimeter around this. And now if we place a water source, take it from the one before, place a water source, take it from the one before, place one, every other one, what's going to happen is it's going to fill in and this is what it should look like. We'll do the same thing on the other side. And when it's done, both of them should be pushing into it, but no water should be falling into the iron trap. So that's the first platform done. 
Now we just have to build the next two platforms, but it's the same principle. The water travels for eight blocks and it pushes them into it. So now over here, we'll need to build out by seven blocks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And we'll need to fill in this whole area. And at the end, you should have something that looks like this. Now we're going to build the perimeter around this one. So by going one block above, we're going to completely surround this thing. And we'll do the same thing. We'll place down water every other one. And you'll know you've done it right because the water needs to flow for eight blocks. And you'll see that it comes right here to the edge, but it doesn't spill over. And we'll need to do this one more time. So coming out from the back here, go out by seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And fill this whole thing in. And then when you're done, you're going to build the perimeter around it. And then we could also place our water down here. And you'll know you've done it right because the water flows for eight blocks and you see it doesn't spill over the edge. Now these corner spots are not good because the iron golem could just walk off the edge. So I extend them by two. Let's do that on all four of them. Oh, you see I'm missing a spot here. That means because I didn't put the water in the corner. And now when I do, it's going to fill it in. Now we just need to place leaves on top here. This is a non-spawnable object, so nothing could spawn up here. The iron golems can spawn up here. They're outside of the range. But this is to prevent other mobs from spawning and interfering with that. And that's it. When it's finished, it should look like that. And this is starting to come together really nice. Look how much progress we've made. So the next thing we need to do is the beds. So let's come under the build and let's get centered. We need to find where those water blocks are. These two blocks right here are the center. The bed placement can get a little bit tricky, so let me show you how to make sure that we're doing it right. These two blocks are where the water are, and we'll also need to focus on the next two blocks after that. So you see, we have these four blocks that we need to pay attention to. The beds are going to go here. There's going to be one facing inwards like this, and the other one facing the inwards like this. But we need to fill in 64 beds. So... I'm going to show you how you can do that properly. So the only way you could place beds on top of each other is if you plan it carefully. What we need to do is we need to go out by seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I'm using cobblestone here because it's a temporary block. We're going to be breaking this after. So from those four original blocks, we need to go out by seven. And then we're going to do it again. We're going to go one layer above it. You could add some lighting down here just because it might get dark so what you're going to need to do is to place so if you're building this in survival you'll need to build a stepping ladder to get up here i'm switching to red beds to make it easier to see what i'm talking about but any color bed will do we're going to place beds on top of the seven block structure that we made and it's very important that you place them exactly this way because the pillows the block where the pillow is is the center of the village not the rest of the bed part of it so we're controlling where the center of the village is and this is the basis for the whole farm so these pillows have to be placed perfectly next what you're going to do is you're going to break the row under them and what you're going to do is you're going to be able to place the beds directly underneath you, if you have a bed you can't place another bed on top of it you have to build them downwards so then we're going to do the same thing again. Break this row. And place down seven beds like this. Now we're going to do the exact same thing on the other side. Place down beds. It's very important you place them this way because we need the pillows to be touching. So we can control exactly where the center of the village is. It's going to be either this block or this block all the way down the row. And break below this one. 
and place the beds. And break the last row and then put the beds there as well. And now we need to go underneath because we need to place one more row in the floor. So you might as well clear out the other side as well while you're down here. Okay, and we're going to place a row of beds just like that. And then come on over to the other side. And you can do the same thing. And then cover back up the holes. We don't need them anymore. So now you're saying that's only 56 beds. Where's the other four going to go? So we're going to have to break the structure a little bit. We're going to need to clear out the row besides the beds here. And then we're going to place one bed here. And then we can come around to the other side and place the other bed there too. Then we're going to clear out the row below that. And we're going to place one bed here. And one bed here. So let's close up the back over here. And great, we just finished the bed part. Great, we're doing really well. So what we have next to do is to build in the area where the villagers are going to go. So let's draw out the boundary right now. So what you're going to do is you're going to fill in this area completely. So under, under all the leaves blocks, you're just going to fill in the structure. So we're just tracing the outline of the structure right now. Just making sure that everything lines up. So that's the outline of this, and let's just fill in the walls completely. So once you're done completely filling in the walls, we're going to place the doors into this place. So from the glass block, we're going to go one, two, three, and we're going to place down our double doors. We're going to place down our double doors like this. Go we'll place your buttons on the inside here. And I just like to put these levers and leave this open for now because we're going to be going in and out a lot. Make sure you light up the place on the inside. You're going to need plenty of torches for this project. So let's place a dispenser facing inwards, one away from the door, and put a lever on it and fill it up with bread. You need three bread per kid. So you'll need about 180 bread. If you don't have all of it right now, that's okay. Just put as much as you can. Now this next part is optional because you don't need an observer clock below the dispenser. It's kind of hard to place because you got to go below it. It should shoot out the bread. That's how you know you've placed them right. And then just flick the lever to stop it. Now you can cover in this hole. And let's fill this thing in with glass now. The glass is going to go all the way up to where the other glass ends. Now in here, we're going to cover up this piece of glass by one. I'm going to break this block and put a composter here. And then break this block and put a composter here. Next, we're going to need to place the slabs. So you're going to place three of them like this. So that's the reason why we put those two blocks there is so that we can funnel the kids into just this one gap over here. And it's good to put more slabs like this because then the adults can't hang around by the, the door and block the kid from getting in. So now we're going to make the minecart trap. We're going to break this cobble here, break this one block below it. So we're going to be placing a dispenser facing towards this block down here. Below this one, we're going to place a block of redstone with a powered rail on it. And then we'll need to break this next block so that it goes upwards. Now here we're going to place the trip wire hook. We're going to place the string in front of that. Two blocks away from the rail. We're going to go down by two. We're going to place the redstone torch here. We're going to cover this back up and place the trap door upwards. If you shift, you can place the trip wire hook onto it. And look how much space that clears up instead of having a block there. And the reason why we need the redstone torch and the reason why we need the redstone torch is because look what happens if you don't have it there. It falls back down and it breaks the trap because if you flick it up and put down the tripwire hook, once it releases that power, it closes the gate. So if we already power it from below, it'll just stay open like that. And now when we put the tripwire hook here, it doesn't change. Now load this up with minecarts. I recommend putting eight in here. This part here is optional. 
because you can just put minecarts directly into the dispenser like that. But if you want to fully load this thing up with minecarts, then you could just put a whole lot in the chest over here and it'll automatically feed into the system. Now you can test it. When you walk over the string, it'll send out a minecart. So now we can cover up this part with the beds over here. So that's it for the tricky part. Now we just need to build the little cubbies for all of the villagers. So that's pretty simple. So to get started, let's just completely cover the beds with stone blocks. We need to make sure that the villagers can't access the beds so that they don't teleport outside of their chambers. So when that's done, they should be completely covered in, but don't leave a gap, just fill them in completely. So to get started on the spaces for the villagers, you're going to skip a block here and then place two, four blocks like this, give a space, two, four, give a space, two, four. And we're gonna continue the same thing here. So add two, skip one, add more. Each space in here is where a villager is gonna be. So we're also going to add this spot right here. So when you're done, you should have one, two, three, four spaces here. Now coming around on this side, we're going to place the two blocks against the background where the beds are. So you should have one, two, three, four spaces here. And actually we can make another space here, but instead of putting blocks like this and then getting very squished in, because we still have to place like for example, two blocks like this. Instead of making this very squished in, what you can do is place down four trap doors. Hold shift to place them on top of each other, close it up, and look at that, we have another space right in here. So now what we need to do is to fill in the roof. So let's just block all this in. And the same thing here, except here we're just gonna cover the spaces that have a villager below. And the same thing on this side, let's cover this up. So I recommend placing a torch inside of every one of these. That's going to make sure that nothing spawns in there. So now let's do the outer wall. A good place to start is right by the door, because you'll need to put in two blocks like this, and then place a button here so that you could actually get out from this way. Now we're just going to start placing our 2 by 2s for the villagers. Remember, place two and then keep skipping. We're going to do this all the way around the outer wall. All the way up to the edge. And then here, we're going to need to start like this. So remember, skip one, do one, skip one, do one. So let's do this all for the outer wall. Let's continue along the back wall. Now, when you get to this corner, you're going to fill in this corner like this. So this is where this is where the villager is going to be. And now the next one we're starting is right over here. So then the next villager facing this wall is going to be like that. So let's continue along this edge of the wall. Until we get all the way right up to the end. And this is where the next door is going to be. So place a wood button here. Break these two blocks. Place the door here. And then you could place another wood button outside or a lever here. And just keep this open for now because we're going to be going in and out a bit. So now we're going to place torches inside all of the cubbies. And then we need to fill in the roof as well. So here, just place blocks up like this. Now, when you come to these spaces that are two blocks tall, remember, just fill in the gaps in between because we're going to put villagers up here. Now, this corner spot needs to get filled in completely. And we're going to continue like this. And for this corner, we'll also need to fill it in completely because we're going to need to cover this one here. And then when you come to this spot that's only one block tall, just fill this in completely. 
Don't forget torches inside all of the spaces. Now we can place torches on the second floor as well. And it looks like we still have to finish this side to finish it out. So just keep placing up all of the blocks. Once we finish this top part here, this should be the last of it. So again here we have another space, but I don't like how it takes up a lot of room like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the, the trapdoor trick. Place trapdoors on the roof and then hold shift to place more below it. And then when you open them up like that, we'll need to fill in this spot behind here of course. But you have a nice another spot that you can put a villager and it doesn't take up a lot of space. Same thing on this floor. And that's it. Now let's count how many spaces we made. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 19, 20, 21, 22, 31, 32, 33, 43, 44, 45, 46, 52, 53, 5, 56, 57, 58. Perfect. That's exactly 58 spaces. Plus the two farmers we're going to have here is going to make 60 villagers. We're so close to being done. All that's left to do is place down the rails. So you can start placing down rails like this going into each of the holes and then continuing the line. And once you place down all the rails like this, you can place down levers at the junction spots. So that way, so that way when you load up this spot, you can just send them to the next one, send them to the next one. Once all of these villagers are traded with, their job block is going to go where this rail is. So you'll be able to reclaim that rail and keep building along. And that's the full build. Don't put the job blocks down now because if you have all the job blocks and you get one villager, you won't know which one he's going to be assigned to. So only place the job blocks down when you're ready to trade with them. But that's it for this build video. I hope you liked it. If you did, please leave me a like. Leave me a comment. Tell me what you think. And hit that subscribe button. I would really appreciate it. All right. Have an awesome day. Toaster out.